You asked and I delivered. It's time for you to let it go and journey with me to find everything you missed in Disney's movie, Frozen 2. Spoiler ahead, don't complain or you'll end up dead. You know, if you're one of those people who haven't seen a movie and you click on a YouTube video that says everything you missed in that movie and then you are shocked when the video has spoilers of said movie, well then you have no one else to blame except for yourself. What in the world did you think the video was going to be talking about? Uh, you know I don't have that kind of patience. Both Frozen movies start off with snowflakes falling. And for the first time we see Anna and Elsa, they are kids playing with snow just like in the first movie but they also are wearing the same exact clothes that they were wearing in the first movie because both of these scenes take place the same exact night. Only in Frozen 1, this takes place after the story time and their parents sent them off to bed. They obviously snuck downstairs and decided to play with some more snow. Hi, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Other Easter eggs we see that night is if you look closely at the elephant that Elsa is flying around, it is in fact Dumbo. Then right below Dumbo, we have our most loved inflatable robot also known as Baymax. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. I was alerted to the need for medical attention when you said, ow. And next to Baymax, we have a super dog, also known as Bolt. Ah, but what does Baymax and Bolt have to do with Frozen? Well, it actually ties in with another little secret. Chris Williams was one of the writers for Disney's Bolt, and in Big Hero 6, he was the director. Then in Frozen, he was part of the animation department. One, two, three. Ha, 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 ha. He's even the voice behind Oaken, the shopkeeper. Big summer blowout, half off swimming suits, clogs, and a sun bomb of my own invention, yeah? But don't go anywhere, there's more Easter eggs on this snow blanket. Do you recognize this princess? Anna. She's none other than the famous Snow White and her prince. When creating the movie, animators also pulled inspiration on how to make the Enchanted Forest from artwork done in the movie Sleeping Beauty. Disney animators took a liking to the way Ivan Errol designed their trees. But he did all the key paintings, and for such elaborate backgrounds, that is an incredible feat. Recognize the knock? It's the same exact knock from Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Good! Do you want to build a snowman? Please, no! 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 Another call out to the original Frozen is on the ground of the bedroom. Below the window, we have the same dolls that Anna was playing with in the first Frozen. But if you watch closely, you'll also notice that either Disney just got sloppy with their editing, or they just made a reference to Toy Story. Because if you look closely, both dolls are on the ground, and just a second later, they're both in the window, even though clearly nobody touched them. Ghost is clear! Another blanket you may recognize is the one in the pumpkin patch. This is the same exact blanket that Olaf was seen soaking up the sun in back in the first Frozen when he was dreaming of summer. The summer sun just letting off steam. This one may not be an Easter egg per se, but if you watch when they get sucked up in the wind tornado, if you pause at just the right moment, you will see that Spin is riding Kristoff. Kinda weird slash funny. Another Disney princess we get to see some references to is Ariel from Little Mermaid. When Elsa goes on her great journey of self-discovery, she climbs on a rock that has way too many similarities to Ariel to be a coincidence. And the icing on the cake here is if you look when she finally arrives past the dark sea to Atta Hallen. Atta who what? She sees all these frozen moments in time, and one of these moments is Elsa's mom hanging from a tree and her dad reading a book. See anything familiar on the cover of that book? That's right, it's Ariel. And Her Majesty is reading some new Danish author. What are you reading, Your Majesty? Oh, some new Danish author. Which confirms this is Little Mermaid because the original author for The Little Mermaid is Hans Christian Andersen, who happens to be a Danish author. Hello. So since Sagner said it was a new author, that means Frozen took place in and around the 1840s because Hans Christian Andersen wrote Little Mermaid in 1836. So Frozen takes place sometime after that. And Hans Andersen wrote The Snow Queen in 1844, and in case you're not aware, Frozen is based on the story, The Snow Queen. What is this crazy magic called again? A photograph. Photograph, huh. 
We look good. In our world, the first photograph was taken in 1826, so it makes sense that Lieutenant Matias wouldn't know what a photograph was since he was trapped in the magical forest. 34 years. Five months. And 23 days. Speaking of Hans, if you rewind just a little bit from this moment, you will see another Hans. A not so nice Hans. So put your Hans together because we just killed the memory of Hans. If you remember, that's the same exact Hans we blew up in Big Hero 6. You will see it's a statue of Hans that got smashed. And the same Hans that Anna punched in the face for not giving her a kiss. We also see this weird moment where Disney's acting embarrassed about songs from the first Frozen, like Let It Go. It's not Disney's fault that your kid let it go a thousand times in a row in your house on full blast before you finally let the cassette go in the trash. Nobody does cassettes anymore, it's called a CD. That's incredibly rude, isn't it? What kind of people are you? Watch, someone in the comments is gonna be freaking out because I used three seconds of let it go. Let it go. It's a good song, get over it. And I don't even usually like musicals, but I think Disney did a good job with the songs in the first Frozen and Disney should be proud of what they made. You gotta move on. Just like Elsa, the Snow Queen uses horses to get around as well. And yes, this is Elsa's nightstand. If you remember, they tell the story on Elsa's bed, and then take Anna to her own bed. So Elsa's nightstand is that one, and that's Elsa's horse. But I must be missing something here. Bruni is the fire spirit, and it controls the fire. Gale controls the wind. The earth giants control the earth, and the Nog controls the water. <laughs> Am I missing something here? Because if you remember, the knock tried to kill Elsa because the knock controls the water. And not to bring up bad history here, but it was a giant storm that killed Anna and Elsa's parents. A water storm. So doesn't that mean that the knock killed her parents? If I was Elsa and the knock killed my parents, I would have been cooking knock stew for the village. Speaking of stew, if you look in the dark corners of the Northolgian people's homes, not only do they care for the reindeer, but they eat them too. Survey time! If you had a spin of your own, what would you do? Make it your best friend, make it your house pet, keep it outside to mow your lawn, or cook it for dinner. When Anna first sees Lieutenant Matias, she's doing one of these weird picture frame moments, trying to remember where she saw him before. And she remembers him from the painting on the wall in the library, which is where they played the charades game. That's it! Lieutenant Matias! Library, second portrait on the left. You were her father's official guard. This wall also holds secret clues to who the villain is. If you look closer at Lieutenant Matias, you will see he has a gold background for his painting. That's our clue. Gold is made up of yellow and brown, and the color gold signifies many things, which some of them being is wisdom, courage, and passion, all characteristics that Lieutenant Matias has. While at the same time, we see the grandfather's painting also has a golden background, only his looks like... Like a car ran over it. Only his gold looks like it has turned very dark. This is showing a reflection of his dark heart. In that room, we also have a lute in the background, which is what Kristoff likes to play. But in earlier movies with Kristoff, we see that his lute doesn't have a broken neck. But this one does. And I promise you the flag of Aaron Down will always fly. The flag will always fly. Six and a half hours later. And you said some things never changed, but since then, everything's done nothing but change. Keep the change, you filthy animal. This one may not be a reference, but no stone unturned. In Hercules, they reference to Marilyn Monroe in The Stars. And then when Bruni runs under Olaf between his legs, Olaf seems to be referencing to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> we already fact-checked all of Olaf's Did You Know facts, and if you want to see that video, go check it out. Link in the description or the eye. But besides the mistakes that we did confirm that Olaf made, there was a few things about this movie that were wrong. For one, you don't keep a box of flammable matches on the ground next to a fireplace. That's a pretty good way to burn down your castle. But if you look closely, when their mom and dad were alive, there was a responsible adult in the castle and they didn't keep flammable matches anywhere near the fire. They only showed up after they died. You also don't wear your shoes to bed. That's disgusting. No, 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 don't shoot that. You don't know what I've stepped in. Samantha? <laughs> I don't even know a Samantha. <laughs> and Olaf does actually know a Samantha. Samantha Vilfort was a part of the story Apprentices. 
Another shout out to the first Frozen. Do you remember Elsa's massive ice castle that she built in the mountain? Well, you can see it's still there. Didn't melt away. The biggest mistake or convenience that I saw was when everyone meets on the dance space. Invading my dance space, Yelena? Anna grabs the ice sword and starts stepping backwards. What are you gonna do with that? I have no idea. First, all the other ice sculptures are there. Then all of a sudden, they're gone. That's convenient. And an Easter egg that no one probably would have found out themselves without Disney showing us is this Easter egg. These two carvings are supposed to be models of Michael Giamo, the production designer for Frozen 2, and David Walmersley, who was in art direction. If you wait until the end of the credits, you will see a post credit scene with Olaf and the snow monster. The crown the monster is wearing is the same crown that he found in the post credit scene in the first Frozen movie. <laughs> If you listen closely when Elsa froze the wind... Did you hear that? It's the winds of change. Listen again. It sounds like we have an audible reference to The Incredibles here. Too much of a stretch, right? Well, did you know that Philip Breen was the composer for the trailer for Incredibles 2 and for Frozen 2? Coincidence? I think not! In the harbor, if you squint your little eyes and tilt your little head, you're gonna see a boat with a little sign on it. That sign reads, Shlekalek, Shlek, Shlek, Shlek. I'm probably saying it wrong. Because I don't speak Norwegian. <laughs> But shro means sea, and lurk means bird. So the boat is actually named Seabird. And that's the same boat that we saw in Olaf's Frozen Adventure. I'm looking for tradition stuff for that time of year. And when Olaf is singing his little comedic song about when I'm older, according to insider Rebecca Breeze, there's one Mickey Mouse hidden in there. I'm not sure if I found the one Mickey Mouse that they're talking about. Remember folks, we're talking about three random dots here. But that's not gonna stop me from pointing out where I think the hidden Mickeys are in this song. One of these hidden Mickeys could be when Olaf is standing on the boulder, or when the boulder rolls by, if you pause at just the right moment, it looks like a Mickey. Keep in mind, sometimes Disney plays dirty with what they consider to be hidden Mickeys. So you have to think outside the box in this one. Or unless you, maybe you found the Mickey better, then comment below where it was at. Look hard. Teapot. Mouse. He lives in you. <laughs> then Olaf dies. But when he dies, we see purple flower petals falling on his ashes. Just a random reference though, right? Since people reference pushing up daisies when you die. First of all, they aren't daisy petals, and second of all, they're crocus flowers. And if there was a real life snowman that wanted to stop and smell the flowers, the crocus flower would most likely be the flower it smells, since they don't really mind the snow. Cold never bothered me anyway. These are also the same type of flowers that Olaf stopped to smell at the end of the first Frozen. When Anna and Sven are walking into the castle for a brief moment, we see in the background a tree with fancy lights in it. But if you look, there's a lot more detail in this tree than there is in most other objects that we see in the backgrounds. That's because we almost had a scene in the movie where Anna and Kristoff went on a little date under the tree. And here we are. <laughs> is it hot in here? Uh, we're outside. Oh, is it hot out here? I don't know, um, but I think it's romantic. Is it? Well, I thought... Kind of. If you want to see the entire deleted scene, you gotta go get the movie. If you use the link in the description though, you can get the movie for the same low low price while at the same time helping out the show. And I greatly appreciate it. So then I could buy Zelda cookies. If you have Disney Plus, you can eventually, if not already, see the movie on there. But I don't think they're gonna be putting the deleted scenes or the bloopers anytime soon on there. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you will. When Kristoff tries to propose in the woods, if you look at the rock he's standing on, it's in the shape of a heart. Everyone ready? Another fun fact about Kristoff is he's voiced by Jonathan Groff, and Groff also voiced Finn. Why is love so hard? 
You feel what you feel, and those feelings are real. Come on, Kristoff, let down your guard. But did you know he also sings for the voice of every single reindeer in the musical? The song he's singing is also parodying the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Bismillah, no, we will not let you go. Let it go. If you want to see Anna and Elsa's dad flirting with each other in a deleted scene, that too is on the Blu-ray. I don't want to show that here because that wouldn't be fair to Disney, now would it? Thanks for going on another adventure with me, and thank you to my members for supporting the show. Let me know what movie you want to talk about next, and remember, most importantly of all, Jensen and Jillettes, share a smile. They are contagious. Show yourself! Right now! Elsa, be who you are. Oh, I will, Mama, I will. Elsa's dead. Olaf's dead. Anna cries. And then a bunch of important things happen that I forgot, but all that matters is I was right and water has memory, and thus, <gasps> I live. And so do you. Oh, we live! We live! Oh, good story, oh.